نحمده ونصلي ونسلم على رسوله الكريم أما بعد From the many or rather from the hundreds of thousands of qualities that were granted to our beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam one distinct quality was the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Every week on Thursdays we are reading through this third part of the sublime conduct of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. And for the past a few weeks we have been going through the masnoon supplications that our Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam would recite or would teach the Sahaba Ridwanullahi ta'ala alihi majma'in to recite which pertain to traveling. And there are a number of hadith, number of supplications. Allahumma bika asulu wa bika ahulu wa bika asiru. Or amantu billah, i'tasamtu billah, tawakkaltu ala Allah, la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. And there are many more. And then, supplication to be made for that person who is traveling fi hifzillahi wa kana fi zawadakallahu taqwa wa ghafara dhambak wa wajjahaka al-khayr haythu ma kun wa ayna ma kun ja'alallahu taqwa zadak wa ghafara dhambak wa wajjahaka al-khayr haythu ma takun Dua to be made after bidding farewell. There are three duas. Or rather one dua. Allahumma tu'i. And so on. The list goes on. Whilst, 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 whilst traveling, if night falls, especially during those times, and even in this day and age, especially in poor countries, third world countries, when you are traveling through villages, where facilities 
Arskas. This dua is such a blessing. Ya Ardu Rabbi wa Rabbu Killah. O earth, my Lord and your Lord is Allah. A'udhu billahi min sharriki wa sharri ma fiq. I seek refuge in Allah from your evil and the evil that is within you. Wa sharri ma khulik a fiq and from the evil of all. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created within you. وَشَرِّ مَا يَدِبُّ عَلَيْكَ And from the evil of that which moves upon you, which works upon you. أَعُوذُ بِكَ مِنْ أَسَدٍ وَأَسْوَدٍ And thereafter specifically I seek protection in Allah from lion, from snake, from serpent, from scorpion, وَمِنَ الْحَيَّةِ وَالْأَقْرَبِ وَمِنْ سَاكِنِ الْبَلَدِ وَمِنْ وَالِدِمْ وَمَا وَلَدِ And the evil of those who live in the towns and from the evil of that which begets and what is begotten. Basically, I seek your refuge, O Allah, I seek your refuge from every creation that is harmful. So only looking at the supplications of our Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam a person can imagine how much he used to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the sahaba ridwanullahi ta'ala alihi majumeen who had observed our Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam from a close distance They say, كَانَ يَذْكُرُ اللَّهَ عَلَىٰ كُلِّ أَحْيَانِهِ That the distinct quality of our beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was that he would remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala during all moments. Every hour, every minute, every second, he was in the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So much so that even when asleep, he would remain engaged in the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. His body would rest, his body would go to sleep. So his tongue would not remain in the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But his heart and mind would remain awake. Because Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam himself said, Inna aynayya tanamane wala yanamu kalbi. My eyes go to sleep. But my heart does not sleep. So when sleep takes over the whole body, then the eyes close. So, in Ainaya Tanamani means that the sleep overtakes my whole body except my heart and mind. My heart and mind remain alert. My heart and mind remains in the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this was a very distinct quality of our beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam that every single moment of his life he remained in the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In, in peaceful circumstances, in circumstances full of comfort, in circumstances of fear, in the cave of Thor, when Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu feared for the life of our beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam and when he said to Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that the enemy is at the mouth of the cave and it is not long before we are caught 
So Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam immediately said, Ya Aba Bakr, ma tadhunnu bithnayne, Allahu thalisuhuma. What is your thought regarding those two, the third of whom is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? La tahzan inna Allah ma'ana. The Quran quotes our Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saying, La tahzan, O Abu Bakr, do not grieve. Do not worry. Inna Allah ma'ana, indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with us. This was the distinct quality of our beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that he would remain engaged in remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at all times. He would remain in dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at all times. And dhikr can be divided into three categories. One is dhikr lisani. The dhikr of the tongue. The other is dhikr qalbi, the dhikr of the heart and the mind. And the third is dhikr hali, the dhikr of the circumstance that you are in. Dhikr lisani, dhikr qalbi, dhikr hali. Dhikr qalbi means to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the tongue. Subhanallah, 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 alhamdulillah, 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 Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Subhanallah wa bihamdihi, subhanallah al-azim. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, la ilaha illa Allahu, Allahu Akbar. Reciting the Quran with the tongue, Surah Al-Fatiha, Surah Al-Baqarah, any portion of the Quran. Reciting Masnoon supplications, Bismillahi wa Barakatillah, Alhamdulillah, Alladhi at'amana wa saqana wa ja'alana muslimin. This is a dhikr of the tongue, dhikr lisani. And for dhikr lisani it is not necessary that the heart and mind is present also. So a person may be engaged in dhikr lisani in the remembrance through in the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through his tongue and he may be reciting any formula of dhikr subhanallah alhamdulillah allahu akbar he may be reciting the Quran. He may be performing Salat, which is full of dhikr. Allahu Akbar, Sami Allahu Liman Hamida, Rabbana Walak Alhamda, Allahu Akbar, Subhan Rabbi Al Allah, Subhan Rabbi Al Allah, At Tahiyatu Lillahi Was Salawatu Wa Tayyibat, Allahumma Salli Ala Muhammadin Wa Ala Ali Muhammad. And his heart and mind may be somewhere else. But it is still dhikr lisani. It is still dhikr. Then comes the dhikr of the heart and the mind. The dhikr of the heart and the mind is that the heart and the mind is continually in the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Or for a moment, for one hour, for one minute, for a few seconds, the tongue is not engaged in the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A person is thinking about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A person is strolling in the park, looking at trees, looking at flowers, or he is in the safari park looking at the animals, or he is on the seaside looking at the ocean, or during the night he is looking at the sky and admiring the stars and the moon. Or he is looking at the sun rising in the morning or sun setting in the evening. And at that time he is remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his heart and mind. Allah is so great. Or a person is unwell. 
he is lying on the bed and he is very weak and he, in his heart and mind he is talking to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he is supplicating to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or he is remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and, and as a result of remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he finds comfort he finds solace this is the zikr of the heart and the mind and the heart and the mind are connected together it is the heart that does the work but the work of the heart is felt in the mind so the heart is like the computer and the mind is like the monitor the screen so what you see on the screen is not actually in the screen it is in the computer if it was not in the computer we would not be able to see that item on the screen so sometimes when we are reciting the glorious quran by heart for example when we are reciting the quran by heart and we get stuck a hafiz of the quran or a hafiz of surah yasin sharif a hafiz of surah fatiha if he gets stuck then he puts pressure on his mind he begins to think with his, with his mind and people normally tend to think that it is the mind that memorizes everything and it is the mind it is the mind that is preserving everything but no from the quran and hadith we learn that it is the heart that memorizes everything anything that we memorize it is the heart that memorizes but it is the heart does not come into action it is not felt i, I have given a very beautiful example of the computer that if you ask a child that where is this written the child will say it's on the screen whereas everybody else will say that no when you switch off the computer it will go away from the screen but not from the main computer and it is for this reason even in english we say that i am reciting by heart nobody says by mind that is a sign that long 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 time ago people really believed that it is the heart that memorizes and not the mind can you recite it by heart i am reciting it by heart i know this by heart nobody says i know this by mind so the heart and the mind the zikr of allah subhanahu wa taala comes in the mind and it is comes in the heart and it is felt in the mind this is zikr e qalbi the zikr of the heart so zikr of the tongue is when a person remembers allah subhanahu wa taala with the tongue and the zikr of the heart is when a person remembers allah subhanahu wa taala with his heart and mind and how will a person know whether he is engaged in zikr e qalbi or not he will know when he can feel the remembrance in his mind <coughs> and sometimes the zikr of the heart can be so strong in the heart that the person can even feel the zikr in the heart also he can feel that zikr in his mind and in the heart both both places and sometimes the zikr of the heart becomes so firm so ground rooted that those people who come in contact with such a person can also feel they can also feel and they can also hear the 
a heart engaged in the zikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The grandfather of Mufti Muhammad Taki Usmani Sahib Hafizahullah ta'ala. The father of Mufti Muhammad Shafi Sahib Rahimahullah ta'ala. Hadrat Maulana Muhammad Yasin Sahib Rahimahullah ta'ala. He was the student of Shaykhul Hind Maulana Mahmud Hassan Deobandi Sahib Rahimahullah ta'ala. Who was the student of Hazrat Maulana Muhammad Qasim Nanut Virahimahullah Ta'ala. And he was the first student of Darul Ulum Deuban. He was the first student of Darul Ulum Deuban. And he was in, in the first batch that graduated from Darul Ulum Deuban. Shaykh Ul Hind Maulana Mahmud Hassan Sahib Deubandi Rahimahullah Ta'ala. And then Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala granted him the honor to become the Shaykhul Hadith and the head teacher of Darudum Deuban also. So the grandfather of Mufti Muhammad Taki Usmani Sahib Havidahullah Ta'ala Hadrat Murana Muhammad Yasin Sahib Rahimahullah Ta'ala He was the student of Shaykhul Hind Murana Mahmud Hassan Deubandi Rahimahullah Ta'ala He used to mention his experience that sometimes during the lesson of Bukhari those of us who were sat very close to Shaykh Al-Hind Rahimahullah Ta'ala we would hear the echoing sound of Allah, 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 Allah coming from the heart of Shaykh Al-Hind Rahimahullah Ta'ala So the the zikr of the tongue, zikr of the tongue can have many stages. For example, a person if he assesses himself then he may find that in total in 24 hours I remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for 10 minutes with my tongue. Another person may come to this conclusion that I remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in 24 hours for 2 hours. So different stages. Similarly, the zikr of the heart has different stages also. That a person remembers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with his heart and mind now and then, like we all do. I am speaking about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, about his zikr. And all of you who are listening to me at the moment, whenever I talk about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the thought of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will enter your mind. And, and then in another stage that a person is able to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala majority of the times with his heart and mind and then a much higher stage that 24 hours he is able to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with his heart and mind and even more higher stage that he himself can actually feel that my heart is in the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala One category is that the person realizes that he remains in the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all 24 hours because his mind remains engaged. So if my mind is engaged, that means in my heart there is remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then you have another person who's, who, who is of a higher stage that even he can, he can feel the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his mind and also in his heart with the pumping of the heart he can feel that my heart is remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then there are those there are those who remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so much and they their hearts are enriched with the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the true remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that those people who come in close contact with them can also feel that the heart is in, in the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we have understood zikre lisani, the zikr of the heart. And we have understood zikre 
dispel me the zikr of the heart and the mind. Now, it is not necessary that whenever there is zikr lisani, the zikr of the tongue, the heart and the mind will definitely engage in the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No. Many of us find ourselves reciting the Quran and our mind is here and there. Even those who have acquired the ilm of the Quran, the tafsir of the Quran, they recite the whole juz without realizing what they have recited. Our daily azkar, the third kalima, istighfar, durud paak, and then the adiyah that we read upon entry into the masjid, when leaving the masjid, upon entry into the lavatory, or before entering the lavatory, after leaving the lavatory, many of us don't realize that our tongue was engaged in the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Similarly, it is not necessary that when the heart and the mind is engaged in the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the tongue should also remain engaged. No. Both of these can remain engaged in Allah's remembrance on their own. And this is also possible that both of them can engage in the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at the same time. It depends on the effort of an individual and which stage he has reached. That person who has exerted much effort and his heart has become zakir, more or less, majority of the times his heart and mind remains engaged in the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whenever he will engage in the zikr of the tongue, then his mind will and heart will automatically come into action. But those of us who have not yet reached that stage, we may engage our tongues in the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but the heart and mind will remain neglectful. The heart and mind will wander off here and there. So one is zikri qalbi. Sani, one is zikri qalbi. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all the tawfiq to engage our tongues in the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because it is the remembrance of the zikr that takes a person to the second stage, the stage of zikr qalbi, the zikr of the heart and the mind. And it is the zikr of the heart and the mind that takes a person to the third stage, zikr hali. Zikr hali means Remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala during the circumstance that a person is in. For example, it is time for Fajr Salah. It is time for Fajr Salah. A person awakes from his sleep and upon awakening he says, La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah Allahu Akbar Subhanallah Alhamdulillah Alladhi yahyana Ba'dama Matana Wa ilayhi al-nushur Oh Allah So he is remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala With the tongue And he also remembers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala In this way that I need to wake up and I need to perform my Fajr Salah. So even if he does not say anything with the tongue, his heart and mind is, is remembering Allah. Because when you remember Salah, you automatically remember Allah, that I have to do something for Allah. But he does not wake up. He goes to sleep. So for a moment, for a few moments, this person was engaged in zikre lisani, zikre kalbi, but he was not able to engage in zikre hali. 
and it is the third stage of zikr that is required zikr hali that whatever situation you are in you will remember allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the remembrance of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will remind you that what you are about to do is unlawful so stop and what you are about to do is either permissible or either desirable or it is compulsory or it is wajib so do it this is zikr hali so depending on the effort a person exerts in this field in this field of remembering allah subhanahu wa taala a person will progress and reach the peak of zikr hali and when he reaches the peak of zikr hali he will not be able to disobey allah subhanahu wa taala zikr hali zikr hali means that at all times his condition has become such that he cannot disobey allah subhanahu wa taala so much so so much so that if he was to consume or if he was to intend to consume something which is unlawful allah subhanahu wa taala will create obstacles and he will not be able to consume it he he will begin to doubt and he will not he will say no i don't want to consume it so for people who do not exert effort and who do not make their hearts healthy through zikr of allah subhanahu wa taala who do not keep their hearts healthy by abstaining from disobedience to allah subhanahu wa taala who do not keep their hearts healthy by keeping the heart and mind away from layani from useless and useless and nonsensical things because whatever you see whatever you read whatever you hear hmm, through the eyes through the ears it goes into our hearts so those people who keep their hearts clean from layani from unnecessary things who keep their hearts clean from disobedience to allah subhanahu wa taala because when a person disobeys allah subhanahu wa taala a black dot appears on the heart and those people who keep their hearts clean from evil traits like jealousy like pride then their hearts reach the peak of the remembrance of allah subhanahu wa taala which then transforms into zikr hali then a person will never be able to forget allah subhanahu wa taala and the zikr of the heart will be so strong that such a person will never be able to disobey allah subhanahu wa taala mere remembrance of allah subhanahu wa taala will not prevent a person from disobeying allah subhanahu wa taala a person is passing by the masjid and azan is being called nothing will prevent him from discarding salat if his heart has not reached the peak of remembrance of allah subhanahu wa taala if a person is swearing at somebody and you remind him that fear allah you have reminded him of allah subhanahu wa taala fear akhirat it will have no effect on him So our beloved Nabi sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wa sallam was the most pious in the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so imagine his level of zikr he would remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala throughout his life he would remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala every second of his life in his heart and mind Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's remembrance always existed he would not become neglectful for even a second and this was the condition of every nabi and very close to the anbi alaihi wassalatu wassalam are the sahaba ridwanullah taala alaihi majmai
a person becomes the wali of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the friend of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he reaches this stage of zikr. So let us make a firm resolution that inshallah, we will also exert effort and reach this stage of zikr. And in order to bring us to this stage of zikr, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has with much affection with much affection appeal to us he is making an appeal to us ya ayyuhal ladina amanu o you who believe udhkuru allah dhikran kathira remember allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in abundance so we need to start the dhikr of the tongue with punctuality take the first step and on a daily basis, let us remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through the third kalima, subhanallah, walhamdulillah, wala ilaha illallah, wallahu. Let us make a firm resolution that inshallah, we will read this third kalima a hundred times daily. If you are able to recite, wala hawla wala quwwata illa billahi al-aliyya al then alhamdulillah, nur upon nur, nurun ala nur. But the minimum is subhanallah walhamdulillah wala ilaha illallah wallahu akbar. And a hundred times istighfar. Astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah. And three hundred times salat ala nabi. Durud sharif. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And there are many formulas of durud sharif. The most beloved durud sharif to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one taught by our beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam himself. And there are many formulas taught by our beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The most famous is the one we recite in our salat. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad kama sallayta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim innaka hamidun majid. Allahumma barik ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad kama barakta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim innaka hamidun majid. And the shortest that our beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has taught us is wa sallallahu ala nabi al ummi A hundred times, three hundred times salat ala nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on a daily basis. And increase this number of salat ala nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam durood sharif on Fridays to 400, to 500, to 600, to 700, to 800, to 900, whatever we are able to do. So in order to make our hearts dhakir, in order to reach the stage of zikr qalbi and thereafter zikr hali, so that we are unable to disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we need to begin with zikr lisani. Zikr lisani. And my friends, my brothers, my sisters, all of you who are listening to me, don't become despondent. Don't become despondent. The child who takes admission in a maktab, the child who takes admission in a nursery, Alif, Ba, Ta, Sa, A, B, C, D. The child does not think about reciting the Quran or becoming an alim. The objective of the child is to learn the alphabets. Thereafter, the child takes another step. Thereafter, a child, the child takes another step. If the child at this tender age was able to comprehend PhD, that this is what will be required of me to do PhD, the child will become despondent. So don't worry about zikre lisani, don't worry about zikre hali at this moment. And do not think to yourself that it is not possible for me. It is possible for every believer to reach the peak of zikre hali, to reach the peak of zikre, zikre kalbi. The only thing that is required is effort. And effort also easy effort. 
This is the the beginning. On a daily basis, read third kalima a hundred times, istighfar a hundred times, and salat ala Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam three hundred times. This is number one on a daily basis. Number two, thereafter, whilst walking, whilst engaged in 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 writing, in reading, in cooking, in eating. Whilst lying down, whenever the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enters our mind, engage the tongue in any zikr that you desire. So these five tasbihs, make sure that you carry them out. And thereafter, whenever you remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, engage in any zikr of the tongue that you are able to. That is number two. Number one, a hundred times third kalima, a hundred times istighfar, three hundred times salat ala nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Thereafter, whenever we remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then read any formula of zikr that you desire. Ya Allah, even that is sufficient. Ya Kareem, that is sufficient. Ya Halim, Ya Kareem, Ya Wasi al Makfira, Ya Allah, Ya Rahman, Ya Rahim. Ya Ghafoor. That is number two. Number three. All the Maslun supplications that you already know, start reciting them. Before eating, after eating. Before drinking water, after drinking water. Before entering the lavatory, after coming out of the lavatory. Before sleeping, upon wake, uh, waking up. When sneezing, when yawning, and try to learn more masnoon supplications. One masnoon supplication per week, or one masnoon supplication per fortnight, or minimum one masnoon supplication per month, and put them into practice. Number three. Number four, on a daily basis, Recite the Quran. Because Quran is the highest form of zikr. The recitation of the Quran. It is the kalam of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So recite a portion from the glorious Quran beginning from Suratul Fatiha taking it right to the end. According to Imam Abu Hanifa rahmatullahi alayhi it is a duty of every believer to complete the whole Quran twice in a year. At least twice in a year. Alhamdulillah, many of us recite the Quran in abundance during the month of Ramadan. But outside Ramadan also. Outside Ramadan also. Take the example of a person who eats three apples every day for one month. We have been hearing this right from childhood an apple a day keep doctors away. And it's true. There are so many benefits in this fruit that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala apple every day, apple every day, apple every day, apple every day, or eat one apple every day, but on a regular basis. So a person reads the benefits of apples and he eats three apples on a daily basis for one month. And thereafter he does not eat apple throughout the remaining 11 months or he eats now and then. So you have a person who eats apples on a regular basis, three apples daily for one month without fail and for 11 months eat, don't eat, he doesn't really bother. Sometimes eat, sometimes not. And you have another person who eats one apple or half an apple daily for 365 days. Ask any doctor who will benefit more from the health point of view. The second person will far outweigh the other person in benefits. So Alhamdulillah, reciting the glorious Quran in the month of Ramadan in abundance is very good. Alhamdulillah. 
It is beneficial. Lot of reward will be acquired. But the healthy benefits that a person needs to acquire. In order to do that, he needs to recite the glorious Quran, engage in zikr on a daily basis. So number four, recite the glorious Quran on a daily basis. It is recommended that each person should recite one juz at least daily. But if in the beginning one is unable to recite one juz, then begin with three quarter, begin with half, begin with quarter, begin with one ruku. Number five, number five, perform five times salat regularly, perform five times salat regularly with as much concentration as possible. وَأَقِمِ salat لِذِكْرِ Establish salah for my remembrance. As a result of establishing salah, the heart will go a long way in becoming zakir very quickly. But Allah did not say that for my remembrance, perform salah. No, establish salah. That means perform salat with its adab, with its sunan. And with as, as much concentration as possible. And finally number six. Engage in dua. Dua is also remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Engage in dua. One is to just raise your hands. And read the formula that you have set for yourself. And which has become a, a a passage of dua in your memory. So even without thinking, you can just go and say, Allahumma anta salam, wa minka salam, tabarak li adhul jalali wa likra, Allahumma inna ala dhikrika wa shukrika wa husni ibadatika, Allahumma hasin aqibatana fi lumuri kulliya wa ajirina min khizi dunia wa adha bil akhira. Like we recite at tahiyyat and durud. No. Whilst Asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Arabic language, if we are not familiar with the Arabic language, at least bring this concentration in, in a concentration in your heart and mind that I am asking from Allah and my Allah is listening to my application at the moment. He is listening to my appeal. And thereafter always ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for your day-to-day needs of this world and also the needs of the hereafter in your own language that will connect your mind and heart to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inshallah if we begin with these six points which is the first step towards acquiring zikri qalbi and zikri hali within months and by the end of the year we will find that yes the condition of the heart has improved much. And inshallah then we will progress even more. And we will also acquire this stage where we will majority of the times be able to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we will save ourselves from disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when this becomes our condition, not only will we abstain from disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but if our hearts and minds remain engaged in the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all the time or majority of the times, then inshallah our death will also come in the state of remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I repeat again, number one, on a daily basis, we will read the third karima a hundred times, third uh, istighfari a hundred times, and salat ala nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, durood e paak three hundred times. Number one. And number two, thereafter, after completing this course on a daily basis, whenever we remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we will engage our tongues in His remembrance. Whilst we are cooking, we remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we will engage our tongues. Whilst we are hoovering, whilst we are walking to the shop, whilst we are going to the surgery, whilst we are going to, 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 to our factory, our office, our school, our college, whilst returning, 
while shopping. Number three, we will recite the Masnoon supplications on their allocated times. And we will try to learn more Masnoon supplications and we will read more Masnoon supplications inshallah. Number four, we will recite a portion from the Quran on a daily basis. We will begin from Surah Al-Fatiha and take it right to the end. Then again begin from Surah Al-Fatiha, take it right to the end. And number four, we will engage in Salah. We will perform Salah. And we will perform Salah with concentration. Concentration. And we will perform Salah whilst making sure that all the Sunan and Mustahabbat are also carried out. And whilst performing Salah, we will try to concentrate by thinking that I am standing in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I am standing in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I am bowing down to Allah. I am standing in front of Allah respectfully. I am prostrating in front of Allah. Allah is listening to each and every word I am reciting, I am saying. Allah is looking at every posture of mine. And finally, dua. When we supplicate in the Arabic language, then we will bring this thought in our minds that Allah is listening to each and every word I am saying and I am appealing to Him. And thereafter we must always engage for a few minutes in our own language. And we must go to the extent of supplicating to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in every matter, every insignificant matter. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to Anas radiallahu anhu that, that if your, if the strap of your, if the strap of your shoe or if the strap of your sandal or if the strap of your sleeper, if that breaks, then before going to the cobbler, ask Allah to help you. So we should learn to talk to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in every matter. For example, we are unwell, oh Allah, grant me cure, oh Allah, grant me cure. Before taking Panadol, we should say, oh Allah, grant me cure. Grant me cure. I remember my father, whenever taking medicine, he would say, Bismillah, Allahumma lakal hamdu, ya Allah, ya shafi. Bismillah. I begin with the name of Allah. Allahumma lakal hamdu. Allahumma lakal hamdu. This is the higher stage of sabr. That first you are grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for those aspects of, of your health which are okay. So first you say Allahumma lakal hamdu. And then you go on to that aspect which is not well. And you say, Ya Allah, Ya Shafi. Bismillahi, Allahumma lakal hamdu. Bismillahi, Allahumma lakal hamdu. Ya Allah, Ya Shafi. Hmm? So first remember Allah, then take the medicine. When going to the surgery, ask Allah first, Oh Allah, I am going to the surgery. Make it easy for me to reach the surgery. And oh Allah, make it easy for me to meet my doctor. And oh Allah, grant the doctor the ability to diagnose correctly and thereafter to prescribe correctly. Because he is also makhluk. The doctor is also makhluk of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When going to the shop, oh Allah, take me to the shop with afiyat. And oh Allah, take me to the right shop. And oh Allah, uh, Make everything easy for me and make those things available for me which I am in need of. And guide me to the right shop, right thing, right item, correct model. And oh Allah, return me home safely. Oh Allah, when I return home safely, then oh Allah, I want to see all my family, my, my wife, my children, my parents in good state. Oh Allah, keep them in good state in my absence. All the time talk to Allah. This is also a form of dhikr, form of connecting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Inshallah, once we exert our effort on zikr lisani, the zikr of the tongue, 
then thereafter zikr qalbi and zikr hali will automatically fall in their places so on fridays we normally try to discuss sunan and mustahabbat and uh, the seerah of our beloved nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam and uh, um, also um, the uh, the uh, the the sunan of our beloved nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam and virtues of salat ala nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam things associated to our beloved nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam so this is an integral part of seerah because nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to perform salah but not throughout his life not every second of his life was in salah he would give zakah not through every second of his life he would perform hajj but not every second of his life but zikrullah remained in his life throughout not a single second was void of zikrullah in fact we find in certain narrations that when nabi sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam was born the very first thing he said was allahu akbar as soon as he was born he said allahu akbar or or when he when he when he started speaking the very first word he said was allahu akbar and the last words that emanated from his tongues were allahumma bir rafiqil ala مَعَ الَّذِينَ أَنْأَمَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِمْ مِنَ النَّبِيِّنَ وَالسِّدِّكِنَ وَالشُّهَدَاءِ وَالصَّالِحِينَ وَهَزُونَ أُولَئِكَ رَفِيقَ So his life begins with zikr, ends with zikr, and the sahaba say that every moment of his life was full of zikr. So this is a very, very important part of his seerah. And if this part of his seerah comes into our lives, then the whole seerah will come in our lives, inshallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all the tawfiq. Wa akhiru da'awana anil hamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa sallallahu ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa ashabihi. All brothers and sisters are requested to engage as much as possible in the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala throughout their lives and read salat ala nabi daily at least 300 times. It should be more but at least 300 times. And on Fridays, at least 1000 times. Let us make this a target. And then increase it to more, inshallah. And try to uh, bring into our lives as many sunnats of our beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as possible. Uh, and read the seerah of our beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also. Every mu'min should read a few pages of the seerah of our beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam at least once a week. And if daily, alhamdulillah. And every family should acquire this book that we are reading from the sublime conduct of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and at least read it as a family once a week and try to put into practice whatever is read. Jazakumullah khair. ولا إله إلا الله والله أكبر سبحان الله والحمد لله ولا إله إلا الله والله أكبر